Today we're looking at Python and this time we're going to be looking at collections because last time we went over variables and this time we're going to be looking at collections and actually using those collections to create objects on screen and we'll be looking at for loops as well. Um, so I'm going to actually go and start a new scene and I'm going to jump into the part design and I'm going to create a body, create a sketch because we're going to be doing this stuff in the sketcher. I'm going to go for XY plane and OK. So the stuff that we'll be doing is actually creating stuff in the sketcher itself, but it can be applied to the other workbenches um, just to show you how you would use collections and the for loop. And the first thing we're going to do is actually get the windows that we need open. So if we go down to panels, so view panels, and we're looking at the Python console. And this console is to allow us to actually take the commands that we actually do in here and replicate them. So if I go and create a circle in here, you'll see the command will come up to actually create a circle in it down here. And we can actually use this in our macro. So that's the reason why we got that console. And we'll just get rid of that minute and see we could have got the, if everything we do is actually shown in this console itself. So I've just deleted the geometry and it showed that, that I've deleted the geometry in there. And I can replay that through Python if I so, so wish, which we will do. So the other window I want is on panels and I want the report view. I've already got some stuff in there, so I'm gonna right click and clear. So it's a nice clear report, report view. And I normally have these about half and half so I can see what I'm doing. So anything I output from my Python will go into the report view. Anything I do within here will appear in my Python console. So that's going to create a macro. So, so we can start coding. So I'm going to go to macro, go to macros, and I'm just going to create a new one. And I'm just going to call this coding test. Code test, there we go, test one. Uh, no, let's call it collections. Collections four. Okay, it's okay that. So we've got our blank macro. So anything we will do in this macro will have a effect on our current document that is open. If we so desire to use any of the commands that we use down here, but for starts we're just going to go through a basic collection or a number of collections that we're going to be using in another video and we'll start start from there. So the one I'm going to show you is something called a list and that is just a it's, it's basically an array in Python you don't have arrays you have lists um, and they're more or less the same thing if anybody if, have, if anybody has any programming now, uh, knowledge that they're watching this video but what lists allow you to do is to have a collection of variables or numbers or strings or whatever you so desire. So simple to define a list, we just give it a name. Um, we can use any name here, I'm just gonna call it LST. We use equals and then we use the square bracket and then we place a comma separated list in here. So I'm gonna use integers for this one and I'll show you the reason why in a minute. So I'm going to put these integers as 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And what I'm going to do is just print the content. So I'm going to use print, open bracket, and LST in there. So that's the name of the, the actual collection, which is the LST. And that should print to our report view when I hit the, the play button up here, the SQ macro. And we should see our items that are displayed in that list. Now, there is five items in there, and we can check that by using the, the command at then, as in len. So if I did another print after this, so if I put print bracket, I'm going to use the command len, and then open bracket. LST and close both those brackets and we should see five so let's clear this run that again 
So we've just printed the list and now we've printed how long the list is. Now obviously we can actually come down here and do our a um, variable called length of list equals and then I put then LST and then we can actually because that's assigned to the length of list we can actually use that instead of print then list place that in there so that will have the same effect let's get rid of that semicolon I think I'm in another language there we go so that's the same output as what before and what was, what was before this list is indexed so the index runs from zero so it's a zero based index so zero will be 10 in here one will be 20 two will be 30 etc and I can prove that let's get rid of all of these and I'm just going to use the word print and I'm going to put LST and rather than closing the brackets and printing the whole list I'm going to use a square bracket which means that in the collection I'm going to now identify something to print in there with a zero based index so if I put zero in there and close the square bracket close the bracket of the print and hit execute you'll see that I now have the item 10 there, which is the very first item in the list, the zero based index list. So if I change this to something like four, you'll see that now the item's 50. If we go outside the list, in other words, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five will be outside the list. What you do is get an error, like list index out of bound index or list index out of range. There we go. So as long as you keep within that array, um, the defines of that list, then you'll be okay. You won't get the error. Again, that can be assigned to a variable. So I'm gonna say value of a variable val equals LST. And then I'm gonna go for the third item in that list. Sorry, the, the third indexed item in that list, which will be the fourth item. So 40, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 40. And let's clear this, otherwise we don't know what we're doing. Let's print it as well. Print val. So it's 40 there. If you accidentally add a space, right, you're going to get an issue because white space matters. So it will tell you unexpected, unexpected indent in he, down here, and it tells you whereabouts it is. On, so that's on line three at position one. So just watch out for that. So white space does matter, matter on the, in the Python. Now, why am I showing you this? Um, it's because, let's clear that. It's because if we're using a list, we could actually use this as um, data to actually plot points in, in FreeCAD and this is where the actual if I come into here and create a circle now watch what happens in the Python console I'll create a circle and you can see it's got the app dot active document dot sketch dot add geometry in there it's saying what kind of part it is a circle and it's put an x y z coordinate here and if i just going to hit escape so i can get my cursor back if i click or hover over that and i look down on the bottom left let's just click a minute so it keeps it there you can see the presets the unnamed sketch vertex minus 16.99 27.7 so those is XYZ coordinates and they match up here so what happens if I actually use this command if I hit if I take these out so if I copy this command and take out the paste it down here again and take out these vectors I haven't hit enter yet because I will actually run the command 
Let's put zero there. Just get rid of that. That's it. And come here. Zero. So what this will do is actually create a part circle at zero zero. So zero zero will be the actual center of this of the scene. So this this uh, these axes here. You can see this dot here. That's zero. That's zero zero zero. Point of origin. So if I hit enter. It looks like nothing's nothing's happened, but it actually has. And the reason why is because we need to refresh the document. So if I go out to edit refresh, and you can see that's actually placed a circle at the center, and we've got app dot document dot recompute, which is the command it's actually used to re refresh. So let me just get rid of these, and I am going to. Copy that command again, if I can get it. I'm going to run it again, and then I'm going to copy the command for the recompute, which is there. Control C that. Control V. Hit Enter, and you can see that's actually created a circle in in our sketch. Now I want those two commands in my macro, so I'm going to copy those because we can do the same from our macro. Let's just get rid of this. So that's gone now. So I've copied those into memory. I'm going to get rid of this print. I'm just going to paste them in here. And get rid of these uh, chevrons because those are part of our our command that was showing. It just shows the chevrons there. I'm going to get rid of that zero as well because that's not part of the actual command so we've got our sketch geometry and our active document dot recompute now if I was taking these as XY coordinates I could actually take the value here and plug it into any of these so if I go an X of val, so I'm using that variable, and there's nothing there at the moment. So if I hit execute on there, you can see that we're all okay, and we can see that we've actually added a circle to the screen. Now we could go and use a different index for the y, but what we're going to use that for that is we can actually create this list and actually have two elements x y or three elements x y z in this list for each of the, or each of the coordinates that we want to actually paste on to create a circle on the screen with and that's easily done because we actually just group these elements up with uh, brackets so I just can get rid of val I'm going to look at our list, so I'm just going to push these down the screen, so our list at the moment has got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so I'm going to take those as X values, and all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to do it with actually one value in here, and I'm going to put a bracket, and I'm going to put a value of 10, and a value of 20, and close the bracket. So that's one value in there because we've bracketed it. It's called a tuple. So a tuple can be anything you like in those brackets. So it groups a number of, um, so at the moment we're using inches, so this will be grouping a number of integers. So for instance, I can have a tuple of called equals, and I'm gonna put the bracket in, and I'm going to put 0, 12, 45. Now that's a tuple, it's got three, three values in there, and but that will be useful for putting, placing like x, y, z coordinates in there because it's three, three values. But for the sketch, we only, we only need um, x and y, so I'm going to take that 45 out, and I'm just going to remove that list for the time being. So I'm going to show you what you can actually do with this called called. So if I print this called, print this tuple, 
and I'm going to get rid of this as well because I don't want to keep on placing those um, circles on our screen. Now if I execute that, on the left hand side we can actually see the value has been printed. But what do I do, what do I do to actually get the first value out or the second value out? Well this is indexed the same as the same as the list. So it's an indexed indexed object. So if I put called open square bracket zero close square bracket, we would get zero because it's zero indexed. There it is there. Let's clear this first. Execute that. And if we put two in there, we should get twelve. Clear that. Oops. What happened there? Sorry, no. So you can see you're on that alpha, alpha, the actual size of the actual object. That should have been one. So that should bring out back our. There we go. It brings back our second number. So zero and one. And of course, if this was like another number in there, if we placed two in there, zero, one, two, it's like the same as list. We got we've got the third item in there. So the tuples are good for coordinates. Now they cannot be changed once they've been created. The actual values within them cannot be changed. So if I try try to t change um, the second value of this code, I would not be able to do it. So let's try that called second value, which is one so zero one equals 90 now that shouldn't work and there you go and that's because the tuple is a read only it's um, immutable so it can't be mutated in other words changed it can be uh, written over so that's actually creating a new tuple over the top so mutable means that it cannot be changed um, when you change something in program it's called mutation so when it's immutable it can't be actually changed at all um, it can be overwritten but it cannot be changed so what we're going to do is actually use a coordinate to actually place a circle on the screen so I'm going to get rid of the The actual uh, last commander that I did, and I'm going to just use called coordinate of say 10, 10, 12. So I'm going to say that as x and y. So 10 along the x and 12 along the y. And then we're going to use the same command that we had before. Where is it? There it is. Place that in there. And we'll also need the recompute. And what we're looking at is the vector. So the vector there is zero, zero, zero. Place it, place it as uh, at the center of origin, zero x, zero y, zero z. So I'm going to use the my variable, my tuple, and for x I'm going to go called come on called zero square brackets and for the next one I'm going to use called one so we've got nothing there at the moment oh yes we have one minute let's get rid of that let's go for a refresh so there's nothing there at the moment the minute I hit this Didn't clear this, but that should have actually worked. So here we go. Go back, and we've got our circle there. And if I click on the circle, I can see that. If I look down the bot on the bottom left of the screen, we can see we've got a, cir a circle at ten twelve, which is exactly what we want to do. So that's how you use lists and tuples. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do is actually create a number of tuples in the list. That can be easily done. So we still need our command, which I'm just going to cut at the moment. So start fresh, and what we're going to do is define a list. So I'm going to call it LST, and then equals, and in that those square brackets, I'm going to place three tuples. So got square bracket. I'm going to use a bracket. And in there, I'm going to put 3, 4, close the bracket, comma. So putting the second value in there, as we did before with our singular values with the list we showed before. Open the bracket, 6, 2, close the bracket, comma. And then open the bracket, and I'm going to put 0, 9. And close the bracket again. So that is a list of tuples. Now to access that, if I want the second tuple in there, it's zero based index. So I just do print LST. I want the second base tuple, so one tuple, two tuple, zero base, zero one. Place one in there. Print that, we will see that 6.2, which is a second tuple. Now, if I wanted to actually see the the second um, value of that tuple, so with two values in there, 6 and 2, if I wanted to see the 2, all I would do with th this list, I can actually put another square bracket in there, so I'm actually accessing the tuple now. And if I put 1 for the index, I'll actually access the second part. There we go. So I'm actually accessing the list, first item in the list, and pull back the first, sorry, the, the second item in the list, and pull back the object and display the second uh, item in that object. To make it easier, you can obviously assign it. So um, put tup equals lst1 and then if I print it up I should get the let's clear this the 6 to 2 and then if I print say top the index of 0 I will then get the 6 so that's zero, zero base of this item here. So go to index one, zero, one, and then print the actual index of that object once we've assigned it to our top. Then we print top zero, which is zero base, which will be our six. Now, with that, take that, get rid of those. We've had, we had our documents here. Uh, sorry, our our circles. And cord is now gone, so we've got to fill this with something in here, and something in here. We should call them X, Y. There you go. So X and Y, we've got to fill to actually place an item on the screen. And what we learned before is that we can actually use let's use these variables as variables. So let's say we want the second part of this list. So this six two, the second tuple in there. So let's get that. So X would would equal second part of the tuple, LST, so that's index 1, and we want the first part of that tuple, open square bracket, 0, and the same for Y, Y equals LST, second item, 1, 2, which is 0, 1, and the 
second part of that tap, which is index base, the zero index base, so zero, one, so one, one. So that's x and y. Let's just print x and y. I'm going to use print, and I'm going to make it nice so you can see it. So open the comma, double commas, x, close it. And now, because it's off the integer base, I have to put a plus in here and actually convert that to a string. Let's convert x to a string using strx. So I've gone print, open, double quote, x, and then I'll put a string in there. So I'm saying x, close that, plus str, x, and then plus y, plus str, y. So I'm just doing basic string concatenation here. So that should, a quick check over it, yep, so that should create a circle. Let's get rid of that circle in there at the correct place. And let's clear this as well. So we execute that. So we've got a problem here. Name last is not defined. Now call it last since the list. There we go. So x is equals 6, y equals 2, which we wanted. And then that will be placed on the screen. So if I click that, x, 6, y, 2. So that's how you use um, collections to actually get something on screen and in the correct place. Now, what I want to do is use these as calling points. I mean, it's all well and good going through these calling points and doing this code over and over again to get these uh, these circles on screen. Um, but I want to actually step through each of these points and actually plot them with a simple piece of code. So if I actually increase this list of tuples, then I want more circles to be actually placed on the screen. That's quite easy to do. That's when we start getting into the for loop. And we're going to look at that in our next video. Thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate some money to to help me fund my channel. All proceeds will get turned back into the channel to produce more content and better quality videos. And that's at ko-fi.com slash man g0. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.